Hey there, this is MathCamp321 bringing you a video on how to solve inequalities graphically. So I do this by showing you two examples and there's going to be a lab on this in the next couple of days. So make sure you know how to do these questions inside and out so you'll be prepared for the lab. The directions say to give the interval over which each is true support with a sketch. So question number one says x cubed minus 4x is greater than 2x. Now, a question like this is really complicated from an algebraic standpoint, but what I'm going to show you in this lab is how to solve it graphically. You don't even need to know how to do the algebra in order to get the answer. You just have to be able to follow the steps that I'm going to show you right here. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to assign a color to each side of the inequality. So I'm going to, I'm going to use purple for the left side, and I'll, maybe I'll circle this left-hand side in purple and I will circle the right hand side in blue. And the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to look at this inequality which is a greater than symbol. And I'm going to interpret the greater than symbol using the word above or over. Either one is okay. I'm going to use the word over. If it had been a less than symbol I would have used the word under or below. Either one. Now you'll notice the next little prompt here is to formulate a question. And what you're going to do is you're going to read the inequality from left to right, but instead of using specific algebra, you're just going to use the colors with the joining word that I've written in pink. So for this particular problem, the question will be, where is the purple over the blue? So I'm going to actually write that down. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to queue up the calculator, and I'm going to graph these two curves. So I'm going to go to y equals, and I'm going to put in x cubed minus 4x. So here's x. Cubed is in the math menu, and it's option 3. x cubed minus 4x. And then I'm going to scroll down to y sub 2, and this is going to be my blue curve, 2x. Now, the calculator is not a color calculator, but I can distinguish between the curves by making one of them thicker. Let me show you how to do that in case you didn't already know. I'm going to scroll up to the top curve, y sub 1, and I'm going to scroll all the way over to the left. Right now you'll see this line right here, this slanted line, represents your typical line. But if I press enter, you'll see that it turns thick. So y1 is going to be a thick curve, where y2 will just be your standard line. I'm going to start with a zoom 6, a standard viewing window, and see if that works. If that gives me a good window. So there's the x cubed curve. And this is the 2x curve. So I'm going to try to reproduce this, what I'm seeing, on the uh, actual graph using the appropriate colors. So the purple is going to be the wiggly looking one, and the blue is going to be <clears throat> the slanted line that goes through it. Now when you're doing the lab, you're going to have the calculator you know, on your, next to your sheet of paper, so you're going to be able to see it. I have to do this from memory, but I think I have a pretty good understanding of what it looked like. It looked something like this. And the blue one went like that. So here are our two curves. The purple one is the x cubed, and the line is the blue one. Now, wherever these two graphs cross, I'm going to decide whether to make them open or closed circles. And I decide that by looking at the inequality itself. Notice that there's no equal sign, which means I'm going to exclude any boundary. So there are three boundaries, and I'm going to exclude them, so I'm going to make them open circles. Okay, now the next thing I need to do is use the calculator to figure out where exactly these uh, intersections happen. Okay, so you might remember from the first lab that we did on solving equations graphically that we need to use the second trace intersect button. Second trace intersect, which is option 5, and now we're going to move the cursor to the first point of intersection, the lower leftmost intersection. Enter, enter, enter. And I'm getting negative 2.45. Okay, now we'll go to the intersection in the middle. Second, trace, 5. And then we'll move the cursor to the middle. Point of intersection. Enter, enter, enter. And this one's at 0. I think I can remember that. And then we'll repeat the process a final time. Second, trace, 5. And now I'll move the cursor to the rightmost intersection point. Enter, enter, enter and this is 2.45. Okay, now let's go back to the question that we posed in green. And the question is, where is the purple over the blue? Now I want you to think of passing a vertical line 
all the way from the left and keep slicing the graph, moving that vertical line to the right and asking the question over and over again. So if I do a vertical line all the way to the left, is the purple over the blue here? The answer would be no. If I start moving it over a little more, it's still no, still no. Once I get right to here, now the purple is over the blue. The purple is over the blue here, and here, and here, and here, and here. Now blue is over the purple. That does not successfully answer the question. But once I get over here, now the blue is above the purple. And I have to imagine that this purple graph goes on forever. My arrowhead stops here, but I know that it goes on forever, and it's always going to be above the blue for the rest of this graph. So I can write this using interval notation in the following way. Where is the blue over the purple? Well, the blue starts being over the purple at negative 2.45 to 0 and then again from 2.45 to infinity. So this is the interval which describes the solution for this particular inequality. Let's try a second example. This is a compound inequality and it has three regions to it. The left region, the middle region, and the right region. And for this reason we're going to need three colors. So I'm going to use purple on the left. I'm going to use blue for the middle. But now I have to introduce a third color, I'll use orange. And now I have to pose the question. Now the question is going to be a little bit more complicated because there's three parts. Uh, I think I'm going to phrase it in the following way. Where is the blue curve over the purple curve, but at the same time under the orange curve? So where is blue over purple and blue under orange? So we've got both of these conditions that have to be met at the same time. So let's get our graphing calculators out and first sketch this. Let me clear my existing entries and we'll start with negative 1, that's the purple curve. We'll do the blue curve which is negative x plus 3 and then we'll do 0.5x plus 1. And I'm going to make the curve in the middle y sub 2 the thick curve. This is the line with the negative slope. And now I'll do zoom 6. So there's our horizontal line at negative 1, there's our negatively sloped line, and there's our positively sloped line. Okay, so again, on your lab you're going to have this in front of you when you sketch it, but I've got to do it from memory because I can't have both of these things on the screen at the same time. So here I go, wish me luck. Okay, so the purple I think was down here. Now the blue has a negative slope and a y-intercept of 3. So maybe something like this. And then the orange was a positive slope and a y-intercept of 1. So maybe something like that. Okay, now the next decision I have to make is going to be open circle or closed circle. Now where the purple and the blue come together, there is an equal sign, so that's going to be a closed circle. So look on the graph where the blue and the purple come together, and that should be a closed circle. And then where the orange and the blue come together, that should be an open circle. Okay, so first, let me find that uppermost point. Second trace, intersect, and I need to move the, the cursor to that uppermost intersection point and press enter three times, making sure it gives me exactly what I need. And this looks like it's giving me an x value of 1.33. And let's do it one more time for the rightmost point. And this is 4, negative 1, or really just 4 is what I care about. Okay, let's go back and read our question again. Where is the blue over the purple and the blue under the orange? So another way that I like to think about this, because it can get a little confusing, I like to think of a, I like to think of this, the a fast food chain Subway, when you have to build your own sandwich. Now here, the bottom piece of bread is purple. So this is my bottom piece of bread. Then in the middle is the blue, which is like the meat. Maybe it's the ham or the turkey or, I don't know, whatever you like. And then the top piece of bread is going to be the orange. So you need to find that formation on this graph. You need to find this sandwich. This is like the perfect sandwich. Purple on the bottom, then blue, and then green. So let's see if we think about these vertical lines where that sandwich would happen. Now if I go all the way to the left, the bottom piece of bread is orange, and that's not good because it's supposed to be purple. Now if I move over a little bit here, 
we have purple on the bottom, which is good, but then orange and then blue. That's the wrong sequence. The winning sequence is right here. It starts right here because it's purple on the bottom, then blue, then orange, and it keeps going all the way over to here. And once we get over to here, then the sequence changes again, and the, the sandwich becomes blue, purple, orange, and that's not good either. So the winning region is in between these two values that I've identified in red. So the winning region is between 1.33 and 4. 1.33 gets a parenthesis, and 4 gets a bracket. So hopefully, with these two examples, I've outlined for you a process by which we can solve any algebraic inequality without using algebra. We can simply use the graphing calculator if it's available. So make sure you know this procedure inside and out because tomorrow or in the next day or two, you're going to have a lab where you're going to have to do this for a grade.